Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic, and today we'll wrap up the Frozen series by doing a melted slushy material. I'm sure we all had times when we left our slushy for a minute too long in the sun, we're left with these icy bulges that are completely deprived of flavor and all this sugary, colorful liquid pooling down at the bottom. I always kind of hated that because you really then just sip on extremely sweet water with no ice, and that slushy is kind of ruined unless you mix it all back in, but it's never the same as it was 10 minutes ago. Well, we're going to recreate this lovely experience using procedural materials only. Check out the frozen pack on my gum road and get all these awesome materials completely procedural and beautiful another way to support the channel is by joining the patreon or youtube membership where you can get all the tutorial project files my own personal project files free products uh, affect future tutorials and most of all help me make more and better content follow me on instagram at ojan comment subscribe share like hit the bell hit the gym don't hit yourself let's go Okay, so I have this flat cylinder shape here, not high poly, but enough polys to get some details or the displacement later on. In my octane settings, I have the specular depth pretty high, which helps with detailed displacements on transparent materials. I don't need it this high though, 25 should be more than enough. GI clamp is at 100, pretty high sample rate, which helps with detailed displacement, but that's up to you. And yeah, very important to be on path tracing kernel. Okay, let's add a universal material, BRDF mode to GGX Preserve Energy, which is a slightly improved GGX version that comes with the new Octane releases. Let's change albedo to black since we're dealing with a transparent object. IOR to 1.15, which is not physically accurate, but it will look better once we add all the details. And transmission set to specular. Okay, let's add a displacement node, change type to vertex displacement change height to one centimeter that depends on your model size if i add a cube you can see that the diameter of this model is about five centimeter so one centimeter should be more than enough let's check the auto bump for some extra texture and subdivision level we can set to three for now just to get quicker response when we edit but we'll increase it later nice let's add a noise node add a projection node to it set to xyz to uvw let's change the noise type to circular up the octaves to get a bunch of details and let's just plug it in to see how it looks and this is going to be our large displacement pieces and it looks kind of jaggedy here that's because we don't have enough polygons at the bottom of this model you can see that it's just a single polygon but that's okay i don't care about how the bottom looks it's just very important that the model will be closed with no holes for the subsurface scattering to look good but we're not going to see the bottom so it's okay all right back to the noise let's bring down the gamma to expose more whites and increase the contrast a little let's add the transform node and scale the thing up a little Okay, play with it a little more. And let's add a mix node. Plug the noise to texture 2. Then duplicate it and let's minimize them to clean it up. And plug the top noise to the mix node amount. Plug the projection to it. And this is going to be our tiny details in the displacements. So let's scale it way, way down. Let's plug the mix node to the displacement and solo the top noise. And we can scale it even way down. We really need tiny details here to get the smoothie kind of grain particles. That looks pretty okay. Let's up the gamma to get more blacks. Up the contrast. Octaves all the way up. Up the omega. So the blacks on the top noise are going to show the texture 1. And the whites on the top noise are going to show texture 2. Which is our large displacement noise. So I'm going to switch it up so that the blacks of the top noise are going to reveal the bottom noise. And then add a float node to texture 2 and make it full white. And if I solo the mix node you can see how the tiny circles are white. And the rest is the large noise with all sorts of grey. Okay. Let's actually scale the large displacement noise way down so we can see all these cracks which will form the liquid pools at the bottom. Also, let's scale the detail displacement noise all the way down. And this looks really bad. Huh. Mm, let's add a gradient node to the large noise, make the blacks much lighter and pull that notch to the right, mm, even lighter. And let's add another gradient node to the details noise and slightly reduce the contrast so that we'll get a little more of those two noises mixed together in the mix node. Okay, great. Let's drag all this aside and add another mix node. Plug the other mix node to texture 2, a float node to texture 1 set to 0, which is full black, and we're going to use the same large displacement node as the mix amount. Let's solo this, and right now the contrast is way too light, so we're going to have to add a gradient node and really crank up the blacks. 
and you can start to see how these cracks get big and flat and that's going to make the pooled liquid areas basically completely removing any displacement information there and creating the flat surfaces in between all this displacement and if we unsolo this node you can see that it already works we get these detailed bulges are surrounded by flat pools it's actually really sick it still looks kind of rough because our subdivision levels are relatively low but that's okay let's move on I want to add transmission information and because we're going to go for the melted look the top parts of the slushy bulges uh, will be losing their food coloring so they're going to be more clear and icy and the liquid pools is where all the food coloring is concentrated so it's going to be very red for that we'll add a gradient node and use the existing information from the mix node system with the displacement as our feed and you can tell how already all the displacement noise is becoming transparent and the pools are not because they're just black now let's change the black to some light red color and bringing in the notches to make the peaks more transparent and the bottoms more red. You can really see how clear the peaks are now. Let's add a random walk medium. Make the albedo super red. And it's way too dense so let's bring down the density to 7 but that depends on your model scale. Or maybe 15. Hmm. Let's just make the SS albedo slightly stronger and the transparency red slightly lighter and also bring the notches in even more. Okay, so the IOR is pretty low to help with the clarity of the materials with the SSS and all that, but also they're way too clear in my opinion. And we can fix that by adding some realistic IOR on top of it by using the coating layer and adding some bump. But we're going to have to add the bumps only to the peaks and have no bump on the pooled liquid. So we'll duplicate this tiny detail noise, plug the projection mapping to it, add a transform node and scale it way down. We want this even smaller than the detail displacement noise. Let's add a mix node, plug this noise to texture 2, add a float node to texture 1, and set it to 0. You can also add a noise here um, if you don't want the poles to be completely flat, but we're going to do it fully black. And then we're going to use the displacement system as the amount. And let's plug it to the albedo to see how it actually looks. And just remove the transmission channel to get a clearer understanding of how it actually looks. And you can see how only the peaks have this bump noise on it. So let's up the contrast on it, up the omega for more details and reduce the whites. And let's solo this to see what's up. And it's looking okay. Let's scale it down even more and actually decrease the contrast a bit. And okay, looks promising. Let's plug it to the bump channel. And add another mix node. Add our large displacement noise as texture 1, add a float node set to 1 for white to texture 2, and again use our displacement system noise as the amount. And actually, my mistake, I wanted to input the detailed noise as texture 2 and the float as texture 1, so that again all the peaks area will have the noise information and all the pool area will just have a white texture. And let's plug that to the coating layer channel. This is going to add a coating layer just where the tiny displacement grains are and hopefully add some more kind of specular flakes on that to increase the specular only on the ice grains. Let's change the coating IOR to about 1.4 which should be closer to how water with sugar in it would uh, reflect and refract. Okay, not looking bad. Let's reduce the contrast on the large displacement. Reduce the omega a little to get slightly less details and also scale it up a bit. And now we get these distinct bulges, which I kind of like better. Let's plug the transmission back in. Looking good. Okay, last detail. Let's bring the Omega back up for a little more details on the large displacement. And you can always up the gamma to get more pooled liquid sections or reduce it to get less of that pooled liquid. Maybe even more. And you can always edit your transmission gradient to control how much of the ice bulges have more or less food coloring in them. Dragging the white notch in will make the peaks more icy and less colored. And bringing back the red notch will make the valleys have less and less liquid in them. Basically affecting this transition between where the food coloring is present. And of course you can always reduce the displacement height to bring down all the bulges. And let's up the subdivision now to 5. And yeah, this looks awesome.
I really love the details of how the ice bulges are kind of fracturing here. And you can add even more details by upping the subdivision level. But be careful with that. If you're not really zoomed in, you don't really need all these high subdivision levels. They will really bog down your render times. So just use what you actually need. And that's it. So happy to be back on making videos. I really, really love this. Next tutorial series will be finally about lighting. I feel like it's going to be a bit different because it's not going to be so technical and full of kind of speed content and more about concepts and direction. Lots of examples of good work and stuff to aspire to. So can't wait for you to see all that. Check out the Frozen Pack on my Gumroad and the Patreon. Big shout out to all my exquisite patrons and members. Yin and Gong, Guillaume Lopez, The Great Wonder Studios, Dave Toro, Celia Lopez, Nob, Marie Robbins, Voyas Chari, Aryaman Munish, Teze Jing, Kim Doyoung, Wei Kai Zhang, Eric Hu, Elisa, Invader, Daniel Larry, Anthony Gargas, Thomas, Chowan, Baytham Ai, Minky Kim, Zoen, Unique, Elad, 3D Monkey Biz, Chris Schultz, Arlen, Kiki Lem, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desilet, Studi Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Vasco Gross, Blue Hamel, Marco Kragen, Arkady Ulitsky, Fausto Furioso, Joshua Ekoi, Jawi Ding, Zeming Wang, Punksacoin M. Siri, Ali M. Webb, Kong Idiot, Derek Schultz, Nicolas Federico Vasquez, Matty de Gueldre, Yan Jung, and everybody else on the list, thank you for the support. Hope you have a great day. I love you. Peace.